This is Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today. We're here with the great Robin Ford. Oh, <laughs> well, I, that. I, know, I know you hate to hear that, don't you? <laughs> I don't blame you. This is a short little series that I'm doing on the electric guitar players that played with Miles Davis. Right. Uh, and we've already had a talk with Mike Stern, who was your predecessor. Indeed. Yeah, and you joined Miles in, I think it was April of 86? Yes. That's what it was. So you want to... I guess it, it it fascinates me because people think of Miles in two ways. They think of the kind of blue, pre-kind of blue, kind of blue, three ways, I guess. And then the electric series one and two, if you will. Uh -huh. And I've always been really fascinated with the guitar players like yourself and Mike and John McLaughlin, of course, in the 70s, um, you know, and then Schofield, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was watching the, the listening to the Mantro uh, YouTube that uh, your solo on that is one of the great all-time frickin' solos anywhere uh -huh. at any time in history. Well, thank you, man. I mean, that's a, it's just frickin', I mean, it's, it's, it's modern, it's today. I mean, Are it's, you referring to that, it's a blues? Yeah, yeah. yeah that kind of slow funk blues. Oh, man, just thank killed you. it. Just <laughs> killed it. I mean, I go, I go, shit, that's great. So, what was it like to, I mean, I, I've, I've seen you did an interview a while back, uh, you know, with, uh, I think Diodario sponsored it about the Miles thing. You talk, told the story, but I wanted this to be a little bit more intimate, I guess. And uh, so what was that whole thing like, man? I mean, Miles frickin' Davis, probably my favorite musician of all time. Well, uh, I would certainly say that he has proven to be, I think, the most uh, influential musician of my life, yeah. uh, which, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm basically a blues player yeah. and uh, I, I learned a bunch of chords out of a book and then I learned the, the scales out of a book. Right. And then I just applied it like I did a nine chord and, and a BB King riff, you know? So mm -hmm. I always consider myself basically a blues player, but I understand um, the, the basic harmony Right. And uh, thankfully, uh, during the period where I was with him uh, and most of the others, you know, it was really, they were one chord jams, you know? Right. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't playing through chord changes. No. So it's even more challenging than playing through chord changes. Right. Uh, to a great extent, because it's just like one chord, what can you do with it? So I, I'm not exactly... Uh, answering your question as it was asked, but this is, good. Uh, this is great. Keep going. Well, so to that I was invited to join his band is kind of crazy to me, you know. Mm -hmm. But in other words, very unexpected, right? <laughs> shocking, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> shocking. <laughs> so, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and he was used to everybody being shocked. <laughs> anyway, you know, <laughs> even Herbie Hancock didn't believe it, you know, <laughs> at the time. So anyway, yeah, you know, just here you are suddenly in standing, you know, two, three feet away from the man, you know, and yeah. it, he, he's an overwhelming person and he always, you know, I mean, he, he he would always intimidate first yeah you know and be friendly second you know and uh something i don't know if you've ever heard others say this um uh, but you know my experience and i did you know find it in talking with others who have you know played with him you know like he basically was just sort of testing you you know mm -hmm. he was always sort of testing you mm -hmm. And it never stopped. He was always testing you, you know. So every time you either failed or, or you stood on your own two feet and you, you, were, you just were right there back at him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So he wasn't, he wasn't trying to, to hurt anybody. Right. But he would just challenge you. That, that was the first thing was, you know, like, can you stand up to me? You know, right. can you, 
can you actually be here with me and, and be yourself, you know? Yeah. And so from that point of view, it's a great teacher, you know, a great life teacher from that point of view, you know? Yeah. So it was a, a beautiful thing. You know, I, I was living in New York uh, when I played with him. Right. And it was, were a combination of things for me personally. Uh, to live in New York was something that I, I had always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then to be invited to play with New Miles Davis, you know, while I'm living in New York, you know, uh, it was like, up, it's hard to go up from there, even though you did, but it's hard to go up from there. It well, that hard to grow up or hard grow to go up, up from there. Go up. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, that is, he's the pinnacle in jazz. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but also it's the it's pinnacle city, you know, okay. like in other words, you know, like where are you from New York? I'm from Buffalo, New York, but okay. I've, been, I've been in New York City often. And, no doubt, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like the, the big challenge. I mean, I'm a, uh, at the time, you know, certainly, a right. young uh, man from California. Right. You know? And you find yourself in New York City, it can be a very challenging city. in those know. days. Well, I was there in the 80s, yeah. right? I moved there, I think, 85. I was there 85, six, seven. Wow, I was there, I guess maybe, yeah, five years? Yeah. But anyway, it's a place where you grow up. You know, you have to grow up if you're gonna be there. You know, just think things aren't as easy going. You're, you are challenged all the time in New York City. You're always being challenged. Right. So, you are, know. Are the guys selling bagels on the corner? Any, yeah, the hot dog guy, man. The hot dog guy. Hey, yeah. Hey. So it was really for me. It was sort of like a, you know, like a growing up, mm -hmm. you know, kind of becoming a man. I mean, it happened kind of later in my life. Yeah. You know, in my mid thirties. You know, that's where it was like, all right. You know, I, you know, you had to be yourself and confident in yourself, and that's yeah. what happened for me then. That's incredible. I mean, I, yeah, I'm great really gift. That's, it really is incredible. And, you know, I mean, to your credit, I mean, you stood up to it. I mean, you, I, I've watched everything I could find, you know, on video of, of you in that period and, uh -huh. and all of that. And, um, and of course, listen to it. You know, I say watch, but you're listening and watching. It. Yeah. I mean, you stood up to it. You know, you really did. Uh, it just, it, and, you know, the one chord vamp thing, you know, I was listening to the tunes. And that's basically, you know, what they were. You weren't, you weren't, you weren't playing through, uh, you know, uh, all the things you are and, you know, they're, no. you know, they're you and all that crap, you know, not, not, not that that's crap, but I mean, it's a whole yeah. different, it's a whole different deal. And, and the, the, you know, with, with great freedom comes great responsibility is something I love to hear. And when you've got one chord, yeah, you got great freedom. So yeah, <laughs> but yes but, and no, man. <laughs> they got a great responsibility too. Well, <laughs> that's hard. I mean, those guys, and if you, if you listen, and of course you have, you know, listening yeah. to, you know, both Mike Stern and John Schofield, um, you know, they played a lot of notes. Right. And uh, for a long time. <laughs> and I'm not that guy, man, you yeah. know. So Miles even said it to me once, like, he said... Uh, you know, Robin, <laughs> you know, you just, you just play what you play and that's it. Right. <laughs> you know, that's so it's like, fact. yeah, I don't, I don't want to be out here blowing for, you know, 10 minutes, man. You yeah. know, like I'll play for a little while and then, you know, yeah, I'm kind of done. And, uh, you know, he really, that he, that, that was one of his chops, you know, was to be right. able to, you know, he would wear you out. Mm -hmm. He would leave you out there and, you know, he got that from Charlie Parker. You know, right. you've heard those stories. You know, he yeah. said Charlie Parker would play his ass off mm -hmm. and then just leave the stage. Yeah. And leave Miles up there to do, you know, to Whatever play. To do. So he did that to everybody else. Yep. And um, I think he actually sort of, you know, took compassion on me. <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't leave me out there for too long. You, you, you know? were that guy. The, the lone guy, <laughs> the only one. 
I don't know, you know. That's funny. I'll never know for sure. But, you know, those other guys, I, they, they seem to like it. But I, I remember, man, I was in Japan uh, before I played with Miles, a few years before I played with Miles. And um, I was in this, quote, super group, which I was not, I didn't feel like I was a super. You know, all the rest of the guys, it was the Brecker brothers, Joe Henderson, <laughs> Freddie Hubbard, George Duke, Peter Erskine, Alfonso Johnson on bass and me on guitar. And I'm like, I mean, I did a fine enough job, but in any case, I remember we went to, uh, there's a club. Have you been to Tokyo? I have not, no. There's a famous club in Tokyo called the Pit Inn. And mm -hmm. they even like branched out and had another one in a different part of town. I don't know if the Pit Inn is still there, but um, it was like the baked potato in LA, you know? Okay. That size? It was small, yeah. Okay. And um, so after one of the shows, we were all invited out to the pit inn and there was a guitarist, a Japanese, he was a very famous uh, fusion, Japanese fusion guitarist, uh, Watanabe, uh, Ka Katana Watanabe, something like that. That's sounding familiar. I'm, yeah, I'm Katsumi Watanabe, Katsumi. Yeah. yeah. And so the whole damn band, you know, went down there, man. We were a large group, you know, it's all these, it probably not everybody went, but I remember uh, Randy, uh, Michael Brecker was there and uh, we're like, well, what do you want to play? And so everybody's like, I don't know, what do you want to play, <laughs> you know? And uh, I think I said, uh, um, uh, so what? There you go. You know, I'll never do that again as long as I live. <laughs> Uh, and I haven't, uh, and he goes, oh, no changes, you know, no changes. So in, in other words, it's like D minor, one chord, one chord, you know, and it's, oh. it's, those, those vamps are hard, man. They are It's like to play for a long time over one thing like that. Yeah. You know, because generally there's not a lot of dynamic range, right? It's just you're, you people generally don't play those things softly and get louder. It's sort mm -hmm. of like, bam, you're playing it. Just keeps going, right? So I, I've never really liked that that approach, and you know, I like I like having something to play. I feel more free I mean, <laughs> with a like, few chords. You throw a few, yeah, four chord, five chord, you know, a few things here and there to, to something else to play. Well, that's part of your style, though. I mean, you know, I'm yes. always hearing you play. You know, I'm always hearing the flat seventh if it's a seventh. I'm hearing you play the nines. I'm hearing you play the, the thirds, whether they're major or minor. I mean, well, I'm just give you an opportunity to play some melodies. You yeah, know. yeah. Well, I'm, I hear that in your playing. I mean, you know, that, that one of the things that draws me to your playing, Clapton uh, doesn't do it as much as you do, but he will do it if you listen to him. You know, he'll he'll follow. The, I mean, I love Eric Clapton. Just to let you know, early Eric was. Yeah, he's the man. Ridiculous. In, in, man. Yeah, it, but he. He doesn't, you, you play a few more chord tones than he does in your playing, I think. That's just me. Oh, a lot more. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's well, what do a I know, pretty right? meat and potatoes guy. Yeah. But with Cream, you know, he was, he had these, this melodic expression and tone oh, that was unbelievable. just fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, 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 I love what he did. I, yeah. He, he's, a, he's the most underrated, he's the overrated, underrated guitar player there is. I mean, it's like, you know, people, <laughs> People that poo-poo him don't get it. <laughs> That's me. You know, they, well, I, would, I would say they didn't hear that. They didn't hear that, yeah. They didn't I, hear I, what happened back then, man. No, you know, the, so let me ask you just a couple more questions because I want to kind of keep this short as I promised you I would. You, you dealt with Miles, who was an intimidating force, if you yeah. will. Is that a fair statement? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. I know Jeff Mackerlane. And I said to Jeff, I said, so what was it like playing with Robin? Uh huh. And his answer to me was, I mean, he didn't, you know, he said, it's Robin Ford, you know? I mean, I mean he is in, is in awe of you uh -huh. as you were in, of, of playing with Miles. I mean, he's like, what, the, what am I doing on this stage? You know, it's Robin uh, Ford over there, you know? Yeah. And um, I mean, are you aware of that? I mean, I know Brian, you know, the bass player that's played with you some and all that. And, you know, uh, I mean, are you aware of, when you're a leader and you got a lot of younger guys around you, uh -huh. are you are you hip to that dynamic? I, I think I'm always a little bit surprised by it because if 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 you've been invited, you know, then yeah, 
you you deserve to be you here. <laughs> no. I mean, Jeff is just a wonderful person. You yeah. know, he's a he's a great cat. So he's a blast to be around. He's a great guitar player. And, you know, it's like he's my friend, you know. Yeah. He says the same thing about you, by the way. Yeah. Well, we, we have known each other for quite a while now. Yeah. That's what he said. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, that was the, you know, it never got quite that comfortable with Miles. Mm -hmm. But you sort of had to pretend <laughs> that you were that comfortable and then it was cool you know then there would be you know he'd say something salty so like as i say the first thing was a challenge right you know and and then you'd have to just say something salty back to him and he would laugh <laughs> and then it's like all right we're cool you know <laughs> but i i don't do that to people <laughs> and most musicians i know don't do that to people they're generally yeah. You know, musicians, musicians are very friendly people. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm yeah. one of them, so I know I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I did see your show at um, in Atlanta at the City Winery. Uh huh. When you were there, it was. It was so that was with the tenor player. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. So it we played fun. some of that music I cut with Bill Evans. Yeah, it was great stuff. Uh, it was really, really nice, and really enjoyed it. Um, I really don't have anything else uh, for you. I just wanted to kind of get that take. I wanted to give, I'm trying to give people an idea of what it's, you know, like to, you know, what it's been like to be with what I think. And I, I'm agreeing with you, uh, not that that would matter, but, you know, he's the most influential musician in, in, in my lifetime. You and I are almost yeah. about the same age. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just, you know, and then you were on stage with him. And not only were yeah. you on stage with him, but you, you're really... You kicked ass. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, that I can't overestimate or yeah. overemphasize that solo and that and mantra was just, it's as good as anything. Solo, I have to heard. agree with you. It's yeah. as good as anything I've ever heard. It's really great, Robin. It was just like, right and, and, you, and it just fan, really fantastic. So before you go, um, what, are you, what are you working on right now? What, what should people look forward to? What's coming from you? Well, indeed, um, for the first time in many years, I'm, I'm actually making an, a new album and it is an instrumental album. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I read that, but, but yeah. tell us about it. This is, it's, it's timely, you know, for me personally, like, you know, especially with the touring thing not going on. Right. You know? And uh, I think, you know, you know, I've done these, these records with Bill Evans uh, right. fairly recently. Uh, I haven't felt terribly inspired to write lyrics, you know, I, I don't, I don't that, I'm just not feeling inspired in that way, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm feeling inspired about the guitar and I've been uh, actually practicing the guitar, which is something I haven't really done uh, hardly in my lifetime. <laughs> I've played a lot of guitar, but There's I've never really practiced a lot of guitar There's a lot of people that don't want to hear that you know that right they're going what do you mean he doesn't practice i'm practicing 12 well, hours a day you know well you know uh, more importantly is to play no no i hear you yeah. i absolutely i i, I totally, hear you. I totally yeah. hear you so you're practicing guitar yeah i'm actually practicing and uh you know this is something i'd, I'd wanted to do and um i had uh you know, I, my chops are kind of up for the instrumental writing thing. Right. So I thought, okay, you know, it, it's time, you yeah. know, to do an instrumental record. And this will make sense, uh, I think, to certainly my fans. Right. And I think it might even be kind of refreshing. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I'm one of them. Because, you know, a lot of guitar players, uh, people who are fans of my guitar playing, you know, they've, you know, they've taken the journey with me. Mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, the songwriting, singing, you know, band presentation thing. Right. But, you know, uh, I think the majority would prefer to hear a lot more guitar. You know, I've, I've had people say, you know, like, there's not a lot of guitar on that record. And I'm thinking, there's guitar all over that record. There's three guitars on every track, and I'm doing yeah. interesting things with those, you know, but they're not hearing you blow. They're not, yeah, they're not hearing you blow. That's what it boils down to. They're, That's what they want to hear. All the intricacies, all the harmonic stuff, the dynamic things that are going on, it, it doesn't, yeah. they want to hear you blow. That's yeah, so I, I'm going to give people that. And uh, something I, I wanted to add, though, on the Miles tip a little bit. Yeah, please. Which is, 
it, it still surprises me, but you know, all of the other musicians who played with Miles Davis, each and every one of them talks about him like they're a kid. You know? <laughs> That's funny because I don't know them all, but I, the ones I have talked to, absolutely. I, I, now that you say that, I'm going, yeah. Everybody, Wayne, yeah. you know, uh, Herbie, you that's, know. That's so funny. They all do it because they all remember how they felt when they first joined the band, when they first met him. And I think probably a, an additional aspect to that was, you know, like that intimidation factor that Miles had. It was like, you could never get too close you know what i mean or getting close to him was was difficult and uh so you know like you you always had that you know like he's he always remained slightly aloof yeah, slightly, slightly mysterious and, but you know i gotta ask you now you I mean you're not wasn't i wasn't planning i, I mean i didn't even think to ask you but why you're here <laughs> i can't stop listening to that guy play uh -huh. You know, I mean, I I listen to, I mean, whenever I got, what am I going to listen to? I put Miles on, you know, and I, yeah. I couldn't tell you one track from the other track half the time, you know. Uh -huh. What is it about his playing that just pulls you, takes you, moves you, brings you in? I mean, can you, you got any thoughts about that? Well, for one thing, uh, he he didn't get carried away by playing a lot of notes. Right. A lot of melody. Uh, he, the, the most important thing to him was his sound. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, you know, he, he wanted to play something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't think he could help himself in terms of the, you know, the soulfulness Oh God! Yeah. So as soon as he would start to sing a ballad, let's put it that way. Right. You know, how do you sing a ballad without giving it everything? I you know, know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, he always had that, that kind of, you know. It uh, drips. Yeah. Yeah, the he, soulfulness just drips. He had to be saying something. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like, I feel like I, like, I, I, that's why I call him my number one influence. It's like, I feel like I followed in his footsteps, at least, right. in that sound is number one. I want to be playing something beautiful. I was never, a, I, I'm, I've never been, I, I could never keep up with people like, you know, Mike Stern and John Schofield, for instance. I mean, those guys play rings around me in terms of, how long they can just play and play and play. So I don't, I don't know how they do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's important to me that whatever I do is meaningful, you know, soulful, meaningful, sounds really good. So I, I felt like that I learned all of that from Miles Davis, you know? Well, you, know, you, think, you, know? you nailed it. I mean, I, I, of all the guitar players out there, and I'm not just saying that because I do talk to a lot of guitar players, especially with this. <laughs> I've listened to you more than any other guitar player to listen as a guitarist. Uh -huh. I mean, to, to listen to guitar music. I mean, the only other person that I probably listened to more, I've listened to Bill Evans, the piano player a lot. Yeah. I've listened to Miles a lot. Uh, I've listened to vocalists a lot, like, um, you know, with several good vocalists, you know, back from that era. But when I, when I'm listening to guitar, it's, and you're one of the top guys. It was you, Wes, George Benson. Wow. A few it's couple a of guys. Time. But yeah, you are in good company, but it's because of the soulfulness that you have. And, you know, and I, I'm, I'm now I'm kind of like um, being a fanboy, I guess, but uh, <laughs> it's the soulfulness that, that, that you that you have and you know it makes sense when you tie that back to miles because miles is the same i get the same you know the miles thing i that's the first time i've ever made that connection i thank you for giving that giving me that connection but mm -hmm. yeah because you know you don't you don't give away a lot of notes mm -hmm. you know they all mean something you know there's not it's, when i hear you play i don't hear a line i hear a melody you follow what i'm saying 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I don't, you know, so in a lot of guys, you hear a line like, "I'm going to play the, uh, you know, the Phrygian, you know, you know, you, yeah. you know, you know the drill." Lines, the patterns. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Yeah, but when I hear you play, I, I, I can hear, I can hear, melodic ideas going on. Yeah. Rhythmic ideas going on combined with it. And um, so, I, and that, that's the first time, and I'm having a little bit of a moment here, you know, because uh, putting that together with Miles, that all makes sense. You know, it all makes sense. It's interesting. Yeah, the great say. teacher. Wow, that, that's a mind blowing, uh, th that's worth the price of admission right there. All well, right. I am done, unless you got something else you want to add. I, I thank you for your, your time and your generosity. And, um, you know, and, uh, we'll, look, we'll look forward to the, the new record, man. That, that's, that's awesome. Let, let us know when that's happening because we'll, you know, obviously we'll let everybody know. Right on. Feature some. Yeah. You know, feature it won't be out until next year. They're, they're hoping to release in February. I might not quite be able to get it. They like six months. Are you composing it now or have you got it written? Yeah, I'm writing and, uh, and recording at the same time. Very cool. Robin, it's such a pleasure, man. Thanks. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night and uh, thanks again. There's little things on Instagram of me in the studio making this record. I've seen them. <laughs> so tell, tell, tell people tell tell people that i mean you go, go to instagram just Maybe look robin up robin ford. ford you'll find it it'll, yeah. it'll be there it'll, robin it'll, ford media i don't know yeah. no you'll you'll be there and you got the the dojo thing i'm getting your uh yeah your, your, your my, my uh, true fire uh the true fire thing is going on our platform and uh, robin ford guitar dojo that yeah. is my uh subscription based channel thank you for mentioning that yeah no it's the, this, yeah Fifteen dollars a month, you get four four lessons, one every one every week, a new lesson every week. That's that's tremendous. It's a steal. In this day and age, where where you can learn from, I'm you know, you can learn from the masters, without you know wearing out a, a vinyl record with a needle on it. You know, it's pretty awesome that you can get what you can get from people today. Because I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for sure. So. Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Have a great night, Robin. Thanks again. My pleasure. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.